Now, Chris Nagus and News 4 investigates. Get your free government phones today. You're going to get your third one today. Yeah, I'm trying. Sign up today, get your free phone today. People are openly admitting they've got three, four, five of these phones. They're getting another one. The people were actually talking on cell phones as they were signing up for another phone. Absolutely ridiculous. This is what drives people crazy about their government. Free government phones. The government doesn't need to be providing cell phones anyway. Did you get your free phone yet, sir? Are you guys doing a lot of business in Missouri, or a lot of people actually? Hey, you don't have dances, you need to. Get your free government, government, government phones today. Good evening. For nearly a year, I've been digging into complaints, court records, and companies involved with the government-funded free cell phone program. The program is funded by you every time you pay your phone bill. If you take a close look at your bill, it's that little add-on called the Universal Service Fee. It was created back in the mid-1980s and originally applied to ensure landline telephone service for poor Americans. In 2008, the first wireless carrier was approved by the program. From there, disbursements skyrocketed and fraud crept into the program. Judging by the large number of complaints to this newsroom alone, it's become clear the cell phone portion of the program was poorly scrutinized by regulators, which led to scenes like this. Now opening up, it was a cell phone. And do you need a cell phone? Nope, I do not need a cell phone at this point in time. Rose Smith was baffled when this box arrived in the mail. So were all these other St. Louis area residents who never ordered cell phones in the first place. Barb Combs got two of them. They even came in different colors. I'm thinking, uh, why do I have these? Where did they come from and what do I do with them now? It all started in September 2011 when I got a call from this guy. I open it up and there's a phone inside. Emil got a free phone from Life Wireless, but he never ordered it. A call to Life Wireless determined the company got ripped off too. Fraud is a serious issue. We work to minimize it. It's something that costs us money. Michael Joffrey works at the Life Wireless headquarters near Atlanta. This is where many of the phones were shipped from without the permission of customers like Emil and Rose. At the time this story first aired, Joffrey told us an independent contractor in charge of signing people up to the free phones went rogue. They signed up uh, hundreds of folks and then tried to turn it into us. As we were processing those orders, we discovered the fraud. Life Wireless told me 917 fake orders were turned in. The company filed a police report and plans to prosecute. But it's not just Life Wireless customers calling our newsroom. My husband works, I work. I don't need a, new, a free cell phone. Lucinda Christian got one from Your Tell America, and the two cell phones Barb got, those came from Tag Mobile. In the second quarter of 2011, Yortel received more than $2.5 million from the Universal Service Fund in Missouri alone. Life Wireless, or Telrite, more than $1.1 million. So did TAG DPI. It is a lot of money, and it's a lot of customers that are getting it. But it's a program that helps people that are in need at a very low price per person. According to the Federal Communications Commission, the subsidy adds up to roughly $10 per person. Collectively, it adds up to millions each year. When fraud is discovered, the money is refunded back to the Universal Service Fund, giving companies like Life Wireless an incentive to root out rogue sales agents who sign up unsuspecting customers. But there are still a lot of unanswered questions. How do they get my name, my address, my personal information, and what else do they have of mine? There didn't seem to be a common link between any of the customers who called News 4, Joffrey told me it's possible the rogue sales agent pulled their personal information from the phone book and signed up customers without their knowledge. After that story aired, I got a call from a guy who was working the streets attempting to get St. Louis residents signed up to the program. He said I painted an unfair picture of this necessary subsidy, so he invited me along to see firsthand how the program is supposed to work. Turns out we didn't need hidden cameras. We got to watch fraud unfold out in the open.
Get your free government phones today. Sitting inside a gray Pontiac outside Missouri Workforce Development. Free government phones. Two men give away free phones paid for by Uncle Sam. Sign up today. Get your free phone today. They don't even need to get out of the car. Did you get your free phone yet, sir? It's a good thing this program exists because without it, most of these people would be forced to use the phones they already have. Time and time again, I saw people sign up while texting and talking on their own cell phones. And it's completely free for a year, no catch, no gimmicks, anything. Some of the customers told me they have lots of phones, free ones from the government. How many of these phones have you signed up for? I signed up for like two, two already, I got two of them, yeah. One of them have 250 minutes and the other will have 68 minutes. So why do you need another one? Because I have no type of you know, communication. I happen to notice though you were on a cell phone and then you signed up for a free phone. Why is that? This is actually what to supplement my, because of my income. Another customer who wanted his face blurred out told me he has four government sponsored phones. So are they with different companies or the same company? Different companies. Today's phones are courtesy of Life Wireless. Dean Stanley called me after my previous investigation revealed a rogue salesperson signed up nearly a thousand St. Louis residents for phones they didn't want. Life Wireless seemed to get beat up in it. Okay, it seemed like it was just kind of, I hate to say it, but it seemed kind of slanted against Life Wireless when we know they're not the only company out here that's been doing stuff wrong. He wanted to set the record straight. He told me he doesn't pull names out of a phone book. He meets his customers face to face. But shockingly, he doesn't need to see their face on an ID before giving him one of these. All he needs to see is a welfare card. Could I just walk up with a food stamp card and get one? Okay, if your name's on it, what's like, do the names even come on them? I don't even know for sure if the names come on them. I might have an old one here from when I was getting food stamps in Illinois, and Illinois doesn't even put your name on it. So if I just walked up with anybody's link card or EBT card and showed it to you, I could get a phone without showing a license or an ID. I'm not required to look at an ID. Stanley and his associate enter names in a computer, but this data isn't shared with other telecom providers, so there's nothing to stop people from signing up for multiple phones, which means the government's universal service fund gets billed multiple times each month for the same person. How do you know they don't already have a government-assisted phone? Okay, they tell us they don't. But I mean, you just take their word for it? We have to. I mean, that's just the way the system is set up. So there technically could be people that have received multiple free phones. There could be. Is that a problem? I personally don't think it's right, but I didn't create the system. Even the FCC, which oversees the program, admits it's a problem. They recently reviewed 3.6 million records from 12 states and discovered 300,000 duplicates. Not hard to believe after just one hour on this corner, you're going to get your third one today. Yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> Telecom companies are making big bucks. In 2010, the Universal Service Fund provided $1.3 billion in lifeline services across the country. Sign up now and get your free phone today. Stanley said he picks locations where it's easy to find people on government assistance. But the government buildings he parks in front of won't let him in. What does that say to you that a government agency won't let you inside to give out a government assisted phone? That's just absolutely stunning to me. Stanley says he's just doing his job and receives a small commission, one dollar for every customer he signs up. And by all appearances, it doesn't seem to matter if the customer really needs the phone or not. Almost everybody I talked to out here today told me they already have one of these phones and they're coming back to sign up for their second or third. And quite frankly, that just seems insane. Oh, I hear you, but they're telling us they don't have it. Charge it up for about an hour and put the SIM card in and you're good to go. All right, I appreciate you. you. All right, thank you. <laughs> the story Sorry, caught the attention saying, of Senator Claire McCaskill. Absolutely ridiculous. Coming up next, hear how one company tried to get the senator signed up for a free phone. The government doesn't need to be providing cell phones anyway. This lawmaker also saw our investigation, the steps he's taking to shut down the program altogether. Who's getting rich off this program? We head to Maryland to confront one company that's collecting millions and discover some problems. How you doing today? Fantastic. After our cameras captured blatant fraud and abuse involving the government-funded free cell phone program, lawmakers took notice. Senator Claire McCaskill issued a news release citing our story and asked the FCC to bolster oversight and implement new controls within the program. Senator McCaskill also sat down with me to discuss our findings and revealed she too received an offer for a free phone. What caught my eye was that I could qualify by certifying that I belong to one of these programs and then they say no proof necessary. With a Senate salary of $174,000 a year, 
Senator McCaskill doesn't qualify as low income by a long shot. The free offer showed up at her Washington, D.C. condo tower. She saw it as an invitation to fraud. McCaskill's office also noticed the same thing we did. Disbursements from the Universal Service Fund more than doubled in Missouri between 2008 and 2011. The same period when cell providers started cashing in on the Lifeline program. In her letter to the chairman of the FCC, McCaskill revealed Missouri Lifeline payouts went from $8 million in 2008 to more than $17 million in 2011. Nationally, the Lifeline payout surged from $800 million in 2008 to $1.3 billion in 2010. They were expected to exceed $1.5 billion for 2011. Are you at a point yet where you want to drag the CEOs of these telecom companies before Congress and grill them on, on what's happening and, and who gets these phones? I think first I want to be, have the information I can grill them with. I want to know um, from an objective investigation, which is what the GAO will do, the, the Government Accountability Organization, it is the taxpayer's auditor, they will go in and find out what kind of controls are in place. Following that interview and demands for more accountability by Senator McCaskill, the FCC issued new orders to crack down on abuse, including the creation of a central database that would allow cell phone providers to determine whether the person signing up for a phone already had a phone paid for by the government, which would eliminate scenes like this. You're going to get your third one today. Yeah, I'll try. But that database won't be in effect until 2013, which leads to another obvious question. Why so shouldn't we suspend this program till the central database is at least put in place? Well, I, and, and, and my bill, as you know, goes even further. Uh, and and that, that's a fair point uh, that we need to address. The FCC knows that there's a lot of that there are a lot of problems with this. Congressman Tim Griffin represents Central Arkansas. His staff contacted me after watching my previous investigations online. I visited with him in Little Rock, where he revealed his wife and daughter, who's in kindergarten, also received offers for free phones. The whole thing is just rife with waste, fraud, and abuse. He's dedicated an entire section of his website to what he calls Uncle Sam's Unlimited Plan. How the government's cell phone giveaway is costing you billions. And introduced legislation to eliminate the cell phone subsidy completely. He says reaction in Washington is mixed. Although the subsidy doesn't come from the general fund, Griffin calls it a tax because it's forced on consumers who pay for their phones. He says eliminating it won't help the budget, but it will help average Americans who won't be forced to pay for someone else's cell phone. Even if the FCC reforms this program, we still as a country need to grapple with the issue of where do we draw the line? What do we need to be providing people? The legislation is still pending. Congressman Griffin's bill would not disqualify low-income Americans from receiving a free landline telephone for emergencies, just the cell phone. Are you guys doing a lot of business in Missouri, or are a lot of people actually? I don't have that Coming up, we want to know who's getting rich off this program. With cell payouts on the rise, someone's making money. I'm looking for Paul Green. We head to Maryland to find out who and discover a whole new round of problems. That was information that we we discovered based on your information, your your stories. And what one Missouri state agency is doing in direct response to our investigation. Please signify by saying hi. Hi. The debate over this controversial program is far from over with pending litigation, pending legislation, and pending reform on the horizon. This is an issue we are committed to covering in the future. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. See you back here for News 4 at 10 o'clock.